you're here today to learn about one of the biggest mistakes that I made during my painting journey and how to avoid the dreaded brush strokes. Let's go on over to my workbench and I'm gonna show you a few simple things to correct that problem for a beautiful finish. Now, there are many products on the market that can help you do essentially the same thing. But don't we all want to save a little money and a little bit of time from having to go out and buy these products? Yes, what you need is literally available at your fingertips every day in every household. Now there are products on the market that I'm talking about that are extenders or flow trawl, which will help with the open time of your paint and help you achieve that beautiful, flawless brush stroke finish. But I'm gonna give you a better tip. What is this magic ingredient that you're going to need when you're brushing your pieces? Water, water. That is all you need. Well, that and a water misting bottle. This is what's considered a hairdresser's water mister bottle. You can get these on Amazon. Certain paint companies carry them. They're relatively inexpensive. I highly recommend this type of water bottle over your standard water bottle because that's gonna put droplets onto your piece. That's not what you want. So water, that's it. You don't need fancy extenders water will do the trick. Now let's talk about brushes because that's the winning combination is finding the brush that works for you and using your water. Now I am going to do a demo in just a minute here to show you how this simple thing helps with the ease of the application and brush So strokes. there are tons of brushes out there on the market. I've pulled just a few of my favorites here that I use Obviously, this one you can tell is very well loved. This is my original Klingon brush. I have had this. This was my first big investment in a brush. And here's the thing I will tell you. If you take care of your brushes, they will last you forever. I have had this close to six years and I still use it today. These are a little more of an investment, like I said, but well worth it. Now, all of these brushes you see here are synthetic brushes. That is gonna be your best choice of brush for getting that smooth painted finish. Now, there are different brushes with different purposes. You may use a different brush for blending, a different brush if you want that more natural look with your furniture and you're not afraid of the brush strokes. Today's video is solely concentrating on how to get that smooth sprayed look finish with a brush. These are gonna be your winners. This one here is a zebra brush. It actually is a top coat brush, but I use it for painting all the time. It's very versatile. It works beautifully. I have another video that showcases using these brushes for my top coat. And as a matter of fact, I've got a piece I just finished and I wanna show you how you cannot see a single brush stroke in this top coat finish. It is amazing. And then we have this zebra brush. This is the two inch angled brush, another fabulous brush. Zebra, by the way, is a little bit more on the economical side, so it's not gonna break your budget. And you know I'm all about sharing different products at different price points. And then this brush, although tiny, it packs power. This is my Stallmeister two inch one brush, it's called. I've used this so many times super uber duper smooth finish. You can't go wrong with any of these brushes. Okay, I know, let's get some paint on a piece so I can actually show you a live demonstration. But here's what I wanna tell you first. Give yourself a little grace. Technique also plays a part of this. And if you're new to painting furniture, you need to give yourself a little bit of time and a little learning curve. You may not realize you're heavy handed. You may not realize you're putting too much paint on your piece. So many things factor into getting that beautiful brush stroke free finish. So just realize there is a little learning curve. So our piece is all prepped and ready to go. It has been cleaned. Now I typically like to clean with the Lily Moon Furniture Prep or Crud Cutter. Again, love to give you options because not everybody has products available in their area. 
and some are just easier to access. Some have a different price point that might fit your budget better. So we're clean, we're ready to go. And for today's video, I'm gonna be using the Lily Moon Opulent All-in-One Paint. This color is Southern Breeze. In case you're wondering, it is a gorgeous color. We're gonna use our Zebra two inch brush for this one and our infamous water. So a couple of things I like to do before I get started, obviously stir up your paint really well. Now, brush strokes can also be problematic because the product you're using may be thicker than is easy to work with, if that makes sense. So if your paint seems to be a little bit on the thicker side, you can thin your paint, again, simply using water. It's not gonna hurt anything. What I do recommend is not pouring the water directly into your paint. I would put it into like a little Dixie bowl and then pour my water in. That way you're not going to contaminate the paint that you do have left over sitting on the shelf with water in it for a long period of time. So this consistency of this paint is pretty thin. Not gonna do that today. One trick that I like to do, I like to mist my brush. I like to start with a nice damp brush. That helps the application as well. So we're gonna go ahead and dip in. Now, you think, that's not very much paint, Kimberly. You're right, it's really not. But one of the things that you need to work on is not trying to load up your piece and cover it in one coat. It's not gonna be pretty the first coat on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to apply my paint. But you can see that little bit of paint that I have, look at how far it's going with the coverage that I have with just that small amount of paint. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my water mister bottle. I'm gonna mist my surface. And now is when I'm gonna go back over it. And I am going from one end to the other. I'm not going to start and stop because that's going to create these marks here. We don't want that. So a nice fluid even stroke. And again, you can see the peek through here, not to worry about that. You're not going to get the optimal coverage on one coat. Can I just tell you, I haven't dipped back in my paint jar yet. I haven't stopped filming. I haven't edited this, nothing. So the coverage on this particular paint, by the way, is absolutely amazing. So I'm just going to go over it to smooth it out. As you can see, I have used literally one spray of water and look at all the coverage that I've gotten out of that much paint. These things are gonna help you to get a beautiful brush stroke free finish. Now I'm not gonna paint this entire piece, the side of this piece, we're actually gonna just let this dry down. I'm gonna show you what the first coat looks like after it's dry, and then we're gonna go in with our next coat. And I'll get in really close so you can really see how smooth this so comes out. Here we out. are, first coat. First of all, I just have to say, again, beautiful coverage. Now, you may look at this and think, well, wait a minute, I see those lines. It looks like you've got brush strokes in there. No, I don't. This is extremely smooth. What you're seeing here is the lack of paint, the lack of coverage, right? That's first coat. And we're doing a light color over a dark color, so that's typical. So the other thing that I'm gonna introduce to you, I know it's gonna be mind blowing here, but here's another mistake that I was making long ago when I wasn't getting the super smooth finish that I wanted. So what was you. the other thing that I wasn't doing well, I wasn't thinking there was anything more than putting paint on a piece and being done. And then I'd get a beautiful finish. So I was lacking the fact that I wasn't using anything to help ease my application. But then after my application, I was just imagining it was gonna come out beautifully smooth. It doesn't always happen that way. So sometimes you need to take a little step beyond and introduce some more things. These are sanding pads. Now these are essential. I have a ton of these in my shop. This one is by Surf Prep. It's a rad pad, it's called, and it's a little bit more of a costly option. And then you have these, which essentially are very similar. I'll put these in the show notes down below. These are in my Amazon shop and they are a little bit more budget friendly. But when I put that first coat on, if I do feel any ridges, which I don't here, 
but if I do, or something got in my paint, or there was a little brush stroke I just wasn't happy with, I take one of these, I do one of these, and then I wipe it clean and go in with my second coat. Sometimes you have to take just a few extra seconds and an extra step to get that beautiful finish. It's not just gonna happen on its own sometimes. So we are ready for our second coat. I'm gonna go ahead. When I normally am waiting in between coats, I do wrap my brush up in Saran Wrap that will help keep it nice and fresh. You don't have to go wash it. So I re-spritz my brush. I go in with my paint and again, that's all I've got. I have not loaded up that much paint. It's not necessary. That is probably the number one problem that most people have is they're putting too much product on. And that creates the brush strokes, that creates a not beautiful finish, and it creates a lot of frustration. So I gotta say, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at this coat two and I'm going, I don't think we need to do coat three. And a lot of people say, don't you have to prime? Look at that. You're doing that light color over that dark color. You don't always have to prime. This paint actually has a primer in it. So you don't always have to prime. All right, we're gonna give this a little mist. I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and change the angle because there are brush strokes in my finish. Let me show you. In real close here, as you can see, there are brush strokes there. Of course there are, I'm working with a paintbrush. So next step, we're gonna spritz our piece and we're gonna work those out. All I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a little bit of water on there. There's no more product on here. Just the same amount of product that I started with. Best to go in one direction if you can. Now, understandably so, you're going to have to move in different directions and that's okay. Don't move in directions vertical and horizontal though. Stay in the same path, basically. So I can start at the bottom and go up, start at the top and go down. The other thing is an extremely light hand. So again, we have not added any more product. All I'm worried about doing right now is evening out the product that's on the piece, getting those brush strokes flattened out. I used a little tiny bit of water and a little bit of a light hand with my brush. And you will see when this dries down, there will not be a single brush stroke that you can see on camera. So let's go ahead and let this dry. We'll come back in just a little bit. That came out so incredibly beautiful. Not a brush stroke to be found. I'm getting in really up close here for you all to see at different angles. It came out so smooth that you would not know if I brushed that or I sprayed that. So in conclusion, that's all you need. Water, a good paintbrush, and a sanding pad. Making those three additions to your process will help you achieve that most beautiful, flawless, brush stroke free finish, if that's what you're Thank looking you for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful for you, but wait, we're not done. I have so many videos that can help you through your painting journey. As a matter of fact, let's go talk about the next most challenging thing, top coating a piece. Let's go take a look at that video.